quite a small exhibition about the Prince of Prittlewell, um, a find that was made in 2003, um, a Saxon grave of a, a princely uh, person. And in archaeology, it's known as a princely grave if treasures found in it, such as gold. Um, it's, it was found in 2003, as I said, but for 10 years it has been with the Museum of London Archaeology Service who have been conserving it um, and are currently doing a great deal of research on the contents. Um, what we've got here are some of the um, key objects from the grave. Um, they're things that, um, they're also things that aren't harmed by displaying them in our environment. We don't have an environment where we can display, for instance, very um, degrading metals. So things like that, certain things can't be exhibited at this point. Um, however, what we have got, the glass, the gold, and uh, one of the metal items is nice and stable, it won't be harmed in our conditions. Um, but they're, they're very beautiful objects and they're, I suppose, the favourite objects, really. They're the real sort of poster objects for the find. Um, and they all date, uh, the, the grave dates from around 600 AD. Um, and as we say, a, a Saxon prince or a king, if you like, um, who was buried around 600. We don't know who he was, and there aren't very good records for that, that era, but um, clearly someone quite important and buried in Prittlewell. So it's a very interesting find for us to realise that someone of that status was buried in our area, and we had no knowledge of that before that find. Um, well, the glass vessels, there are two green and two blue um, glass vessels that were thought to be made in the Mediterranean area. So the, the value of these was probably that they were imported. Um, they, glass was a very valuable item anyway in those days. Not everyone would have had glass. And it was probably very much a decorative item for luxury goods rather than a very everyday item like we would think. Um, but the, the four pieces that we have, they're actually quite modern in design. Um, they've been highly conserved. They were quite, most of them were quite crushed. They've been put back together, but design-wise, they're very modern. We think they're actually something that you could imagine being sold now, um, but, and very beautiful. Um, the interesting thing about um, the blue ones is that they know that both of them were made at exactly the same time from the same, um, Pot, if you like, of molten glass um, because they had exactly the same elements in them. So they were made on the same day in the same workshop, and that's something they found out through analysing the glass. Um, the flagon uh, was probably one of the most impressive objects from the grave, I would thought. Um, it's a very elaborately made item and it's in extremely good condition. And it's one of only a few known in the whole world. Um, it's a sort of copper alloy. Um, originally, it probably would have looked like shiny copper, but now it's um, the patination has made it green. But it's, um, as I say, it's one of only a few in the whole world. The important one about the thing about this one is that um, we know the complete context of it. It was found in this grave. The other ones. Um, I believe, don't have very much information about where they came from. They're in private collections and there isn't a very good record of exactly where they came from. So this one is very important in that way. Yeah, there's several pieces of gold, two crosses which um, appear to have been placed on the uh, buried man's eyes from where they were, it certainly looked like that. And then a belt buckle which of course fit his waist and there were two coins, um, one possibly in the hand, and then there was one sort of up on his clothes in the neck area, for whatever reason that may be. Uh, they may have been contained in something which was long gone, maybe some sort of pouch or something. But um, it's the crosses that obviously um, make this grave, give this grave its Christian element. There are other elements as well for Christianity. Um, but that, this is one of the reasons why the grave was so important, was that it just showed this crossover between the pagan and the Christian faiths. I mean, by all, it, mainly it was a pagan burial. Clearly, he was in a tomb with 
of objects, which is a pagan tradition. But some of those objects had, a, had Christian symbols on them, which suggests that there was an element of Christianity. Whether he was a Christian or not is absolutely impossible to say, but there were Christian symbols in the grave. 